Hello and welcome to another webinar brought to you by the Garmin Marine Team. Today's webinar topic, we will be looking at the Striker Vivid versus the Echo Map UHD and Ultra Series and what works best for you. As always, uh, if you have any questions, please send email to the marine.training at garmin.com and we will try to answer them in a timely manner. So I have classified um, our marine units into a good, better, best categories. Uh, with the Striker Vivid being the good, the better being the Echo Map UHD and the Echo Map Ultra, and the best being the GPS Map series. Uh, to simplify this webinar, I am only going to be going over the Striker Vivid, the Echo Map UHD, and the Echo Map Ultra. I will do a, be doing a part two webinar on the GPS Map series. Um, and remember, this is only to be used as a reference. Um, everyone will need to do their own research and choose what product works best for them. So let's take a quick look at the series we will be discussing today. The first one uh, we're going to talk about is the Striker Vivid series. And the first thing right out of the box I want to make perfectly clear is that the Striker series has no mapping built in. There is no preloaded cartography built into any of the Striker series. They do have a GPS, so you can mark waypoints, but there is no mapping. So the Strikers are available in a four, five, seven, and nine. So let's take a look at how we uh, name them. Uh, the first number represents screen size. So you have a four is a four inch screen, a Striker five is a five inch screen. The next two letters represent what sonar comes preloaded into the unit. All of the strikers have 2D traditional sonar built in, okay? If you go to a CV unit, that means it has clear view technology and 2D traditional built in. If you jump up to a 7SV or an SV unit, it now includes side view scanning. So you get all three. You get 2D traditional, clear view, as well as side view. So if we look at a 7SV Vivid, that is a 7-inch screen with side view, clear view, and 2D traditional sonar. We go to a 9SV, that is a 9-inch screen with side view, clear view, and 2D traditional sonar. But again, guys, no mapping are in these units. The next series we're going to take a quick look at is the Echo Map UHD series. So the big difference here is these do have mapping preloaded. There's two options. There's an inland mapping units and there's a coastal mapping units. So the the naming of these units similar to the Striker series, the first number represents screen size. So you have a four inch, a six inch, a seven inch, and a nine inch. The second number is what mapping is built in. So if you have a three unit, a 43, a 63, a 73, et cetera, you have inland charts built into your unit. If you have a four, such as a 44, 64, 74, you have coastal charts built in. So if you're fishing the intercoastal or you like to take your kayak or boat a little offshore, you would want a four series. You would not want a three series because that has your inland lakes in it. But let's say you do have a three series, a 43. So we fish inland lakes, but occasionally I take my vessel to the intercoast or offshore. There are supplemental mapping cards you can buy. The first one I want to talk about is the blue chart G3. So that is all of the US and Western Canada and that's the coastal offshore. That is going to add auto guidance, depth range shading, up to one foot contours, and, and shallow water shading, okay? And that's a card you purchase at your local store, put the chip into your unit, and now you have coastal offshore mapping. Uh, if you have a coastal unit, like a 44, 50, 64, 74, and you wanna fish inland lakes, you can buy the US Lakeview G3 card. 
Now you're going to get over 17,000 lakes with one foot contours. You're going to get auto guidance, depth range shading, and up to one foot contours. Uh, you can click on the in my is my lake included in this product or go to lakes.garmin.com. Uh, once you're once you go here, you can type in what state you live in and it'll pull up a list of all the lakes we have already surveyed. And this is going to be all the Navionics lakes as well as all the Garmin lakes included. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the Echo Map Ultra. This is a 10 and a 12 inch unit. These are touchscreen units with keyed assist. Uh, they have built in sonar. So on these these models, you're all, you're going to get all three, our, our side view, clear view, as well as 2D traditional. Built-in cartography, you're going to get both when you go step up to an Echo Map Ultra unit. You're going to get the blue chart G3 mapping as well as the Lake View mapping uh, G3 card uh, with built-in auto guidance. So in the box, you're going to get the unit, the cover, the mount, power cable, and the transom mount transducer. I do want to take a moment to mention that in all of our units, when you buy a unit with the transducer in the box, you're also going to get the trolling motor attachment as well. So if you do want to mount your transducer on your trolling motor, that comes in the box. So let's take a look firstly at Let's say you've got a kayak and a John boat. Here's some options you can go with, with a good, better, and best. So good would be, first of all, the Striker Vivid 4CV, or you can upgrade to a seven inch screen and go with the Striker 7CV. Uh, the features you get here are quick draw contours, integrated GPS. Remember, no mapping. You can mark up to 5,000 waypoints, as well as you will have a track log. You have 10 routes you can build and built-in sonar. If you wanna make a step up to better, you can step up to the Striker of Vivid SV, and now the added feature, side view scanning sonar. And if you again wanna step up to an even better unit, you can go with the best, and that would go, I would recommend going with either an Echo Map 43 uh, CV or step up to an Echo Map UHD 73 SV. Uh, so the added features here is now you have live scope compa compatibility on the 7 and the 9. Uh, all the Echo Maps come with a quick release mount. Uh, you do get preloaded mapping. In this case, you get the Lake View G3. Again, if you're using your, your kayak, canoe, intercoastal, a little bit offshore, uh, you would want to go with a 4 series, a 44 or a 74 to get those mapping. Uh, you do get side view sonar in the 7 inch and up. Sonar recording rewind, NEMA 2000 capabilities in the six inch and up, as well as sh sonar sharing, which I will discuss a little later, in the seven inch and up. So let's take a little closer look at uh, the Striker Vivid CV. So for $179, you're getting the unit with a transducer, a GT20 transducer. Uh, this unit has the ability to do quick draw contours. So remember, no mapping. There's no cartography built into this unit. But we do have a feature called Quick Draw Contours. This gives you the ability to make your own mapping. So if you turn Quick Draw Contours on, um, as you're paddling or uh, motoring across the water, you're going to build one foot mapping on your unit. And these units will hold up to 2 million acres worth of data. That's equal to about 2 million football fields. So you'll never fill that unit up. So you can build the most up-to-date mapping there is. You're also going to get a GPS built into the Striker series. So you can mark up to 5,000 waypoints. Your sonars, you get 2D traditional sonar as well as our Clearview Vivid color palettes. Okay, that's brand new in the Striker Vivid series. If we jump up to better, uh, we, get, we would go with our Vivid Striker Vivid 7SV. Again, we're going to get all the same features, quick draw contours, a GPS built in, 2D traditional sonar, clear view uh, sonar, but we're stepping up and now we get our vivid side, side view scanning sonar. Um, we also get a feature in the 7 and a 9 inch striker called Active Captain. Here's where you can download the free Active Captain app on your phone. And now you have the ability to do a few things. With the Striker series, you can 
upload your quick draw maps to the quick draw community as well as download maps from the quick draw community so what that means is maybe i've drawn some maps of the area i live in some of the lakes i uploaded them to the quick draw community you can actually browse the community look at maps and download them into your unit for free um, so again you you they don't come preloaded with maps but you have the ability to download quick draw maps only or build your own uh, the Active Captain app also gives you the ability to save your waypoints on the app. You can do software upgrades uh, to the units uh, and get your smart notifications or text messages uh, through the uh, Striker Vivid 7 SV and 9 SV. And then jumping up to the best, I would recommend going with the UHD 73 SV. Again, you're getting all the same features, but now you're getting your built-in mapping. Lake View G3, if you're a freshwater fisherman. Uh, the other nice feature you're getting with the Echo Map series is depth range shading. Uh, what that means is, let's say I'm fishing a lake and I notice that all my bass are hitting uh, between 10 and 15 feet of water. So I can actually go in and shade that lake in I can pick 10 to 15 as a range. Maybe I want to shade it in in green. Now I can shade that whole lake between 10 and 15 in green so I know exactly where to fish. And of course, the other big thing out there is live scope. So all Echo Map 7 and 9 inch units uh, are compatible with live scope. So let's look at some transducer mounting options. So, you know, for a kayak, it's kind of kind of hard to put up put a transducer. There's a few options out there. Um, I would recommend either going with a suction cup mount. And again, I know a suction cup the suction cup really doesn't mount well onto a kayak. But I've taken my mount off and actually mounted that the bracket to a pole that I can extend over the, into the water. Uh, the other option for you is the kayak in-hole transducer mount. This is a great feature we sell for uh, a, a great add-on we sell, I say, for $19.99. Uh, this is a foam pad uh, with an adhesive backing that you stick on the bottom of your kayak. Uh, then you take a cup of water and you fill the little cavity in uh, here. Um, and then you just push your transducer in the cavity. So uh, great, works well. It's it's pull, it's you know removable. So at the end of the day, you can just pull that transducer out. Just want to make a quick point that if you are using the uh, foam pad, uh, the side view transducer, that image will not work with this mount. Uh, it will read traditional 2D and down view but side view imaging will not work in a kayak if you have an in-hole mount. Another option I want to talk, talk briefly about is our portable kits. So these are awesome if you really don't want to put a battery on the boat or you don't want to permanently mount that unit on your boat or, or your kayak or your aluminum boat. Um, so in the portable kit, you get a dual beam transducer. You get the Striker 4. Uh, you get the tilt swivel mount. You get a portable bag. Uh, this bag is designed to actually fit inside a five gallon bucket. So it's really convenient on the kayak. Uh, you get the suction cup mount, you get a foam float. You get the kayak in-hole transducer mount as well. Uh, you get a power cable, rechargeable battery, AC charger, and of course your documentation. Um, if you already have a uh, striker or an echo map unit, and you, you may have it on your boat now, but you want to put it on a canoe or a kayak or a small aluminum boat, you can go with a portable kit. And you can take your head unit and mount it into the portable kit. So it comes with the bag, the transducer suction cup, uh, the foam float, power cable, and rechargeable battery and AC smart charger. So this is a great kind of solution for uh, 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 two quick, two portable uh, solutions for you. Last but not least, I do want to take a mention and talk about the Striker Cast. Uh, this is a castable sonar. They come in two versions. We have a Striker Cast uh, and a Striker Cast with GPS. So you download the free Striker Cast app to your phone. You pair it to the Striker Cast, and now you have your sonar on your phone. This is a chirping sonar that you now have the ability to view it on your phone. Uh, if you go with the GPS model, you can actually draw quick draw. So as you pull that 
a striker cast across the water. You're building one foot contours. It's pretty awesome. Um, these are very durable. Uh, they're designed, they come with a tether in the box so you can drag them behind you or throw them out. You can also hook it to a fishing rod and throw it out. Uh, and then once you find fish structure, something on the bottom, you take another fishing rod and you with your bait on it and, and throw it in that direction. Um, the, the units have an internal uh, USB rechargeable battery with a minimum of 10 hours of battery life. Nice thing about these units that when they hit the water, they turn on. When you take the, the striker cast out of the water, they cut off. So uh, it saves your battery life. So now let's uh, switch gears and talk about a bass boat. So a couple options I want to talk about in the good and the better. So with the good, um, I would recommend going with the EchoMap UHD 73 SV or the Echo Map UHD 93 SV get a little bigger screen. Uh, these are live scope compatible with a seven and nine inch. You get the quick release mount, you get preloaded mapping. In this case, Lakeview G3 is built in. So you have those 17,000 plus lakes built in. Uh, you do have a mic one micro SD card slot. So if you do buy additional mapping, you can download it into this unit. These units have the capability of do, doing sonar recording and rewinding. They support our Fusion Link, our Fusion Stereos. Uh, they also support NEMA 2000. Uh, and you can share between units with a network cable. And I'll talk about that a little later. If you jump up to the better, uh, I would recommend the EchoMap Ultra 106. And that's a 10 inch screen or the EchoMap Ultra 126, which is a 12 inch screen. Now you're getting a 10 hertz internal GPS antenna built in. The Echo Map UHDs have a five hertz, so they update five times a second. The Echo Map Ultras have a 10 hertz, so they update 10 times a second. They have two Garmin Marine network ports, uh, preloaded mapping, but you're getting both the Blue Water G3 as well as the Lakeview G3. Uh, they have two micro SD card slots. Uh, they support the Fusion Link, Sonar Recording and Rewind, NEMA 2000 capability, uh, live scope capability. These have a port also dedicated for the LVS 12. So that is our entry level live scope, which I'll talk about a little later. So taking a look a little more in depth at the EchoMap UHD 73SV and the 93SV, you're going to get quick draw contours like we talked about before. Okay, here you do have to keep a chip in the unit. It doesn't record quick draw on the internal memory like on the Striker series. So you do have to have an SD card in the unit to re record quick draw. Uh, Fusion, this is through NEMA 2000. So if you have a Fusion stereo, um, you can control it through the Garmin device. Built in Lakeview G3 cartography. Uh, this is standard in all the uh, Echo Map UHD 3 series, the 43 through the 93. Uh, you're going to get your 2D sonar, your vivid clear view sonar, and your vivid side view scanning sonar because we've selected an SV model. Uh, engine data. So this is through NEMA 2000. So what you would have to do is reach out to your engine manufacturer and buy a gateway. So Mercury has their own gateway, Yamaha has a gateway, Suzuki has a gateway, etc. So once the gateway is hooked up into your engine harness, a normal NEMA 2000 cord would go from that gateway into the, the NEMA backbone, which you would build, that would go into the back of our unit, and now you could get all your engine data on the screen. But there are additional components required for this. Uh, you do get the depth range shading, and of course, live scope capable in both the 73 and 93. When we jump up to the Echo Map Ultra 10 and 12, again, we're getting both Lakeview and Blue Chart G3 cartography, all of our scanning sonars, 2D traditional, clear view, um, clear view, um, as well as side view scanning sonar, engine data, depth range shading, live scope. But now we actually have an extra port on the back of the unit that will accept our LVS-12 transducer. Now, this is a entry-level live scope for $499. Uh, you only get 30 degrees forward and 30 degrees down. 
Um, you don't get the full live scope as you do in our $1,499 uh, model. So I would definitely look, do your research, go look at what you get in a LVS-12 Panoptics versus our normal live scope bundle. Uh, and and uh, you'll have to make your own choice. So sharing, I spoke earlier about how uh, the EchoMap UHD and the EchoMap Ultras can share. Uh, so this is done through the Ethernet. So the EchoMap UHD 7 inch and 9 inch will share through the Panoptics port on the back of the unit. That is actually a network port, but it is marked Panoptics. That's how those units share between units. Uh, the EchoMap Ultra 10 and 12 have two network uh, two network uh, ports on the back. That's where you will share sonar, user data, uh, mapping, and also connect if you already have an EchoMap UHD 7 or 9 inch. So data sharing. The units will share sonar between units. They will share waypoints, routes, tracks, and mapping between units. They will not share uh, to the GPS map series. So if you already have a GPS map series on your boat and you want to go with a second station, do not add an Echo Map UHD or Ultra. They will not work with a GPS map series. If you try to hook them up, the UHD or Ultra will shut off. Um, one big thing here, guys, the units will not support radar. Uh, so if you do have a coastal offshore small center console and you buy a, a unit, you know, think down the line in six months a year, do you want to add radar to your boat? If you do, do not purchase an Echo Map UHD or Echo Map Ultra. You want to step up to the GPS map series. They will accept radar. Um, and last but not least, remember, uh, they will not share with any other striker or Echo Map units. Okay. So looking at the back of the unit, let's let's uh, first look at the Echo Map 7 and a 9. So we have our quick release cradle right here. So you just mash the handle down. You can take the unit off the boat. The cradle stays on your boat. This is very convenient for taking the units on and off or taking them between boats. The red port here is for your power. Your black port here is where your NEMA 2000 plugs into. Uh, your orange port is your 12-pin sonar port. This is for Chirp Traditional, down view or clear view and side view. Uh, this port will be blue if you have a CV unit. So if you have a uh, unit that will only do clear view and tr 2D traditional, this port will be blue. Then you have one network port on the seven and the nine inch. And you can't really see it, but it is actually labeled Panoptics. So you can plug, if you only have a single unit, you can plug your Panoptics in here. If you have uh, multiple units you're going to, this is where you would network from. If we take a step over to our Echo Map Ultras, again, quick release handle. We have our power port, our NEMA 2000 port. We have our orange 12 pin sonar port, two network ports, okay? Um, and then we have a yellow port, which is new. So this is only on the Echo Map Ultras and the 8600s. This is where you plug the LVS-12 uh, live scope, our entry basic live scope into. So if you don't have an Echo Map Ultra or an 8600 series, the LVS-12 will not work. So let's look at some examples of network connections. So in this example, we have a 73SV on the bow and we have a two 93 SVs on the uh, console. Each one of these units have one port. So we really can't connect them all together just by daisy chaining them. So we would have to purchase a GMS-10 network port expander as well as a marine network cable. These come in 20 feet and six foot options. So you would run the bow unit the network port, you would run a network cable to the port expander. Then you would run your both your 93 SVs because these two both only have one port. You would run a network cable from one of your 93 SVs on your console to the network port and then from the other 93 SV to the network port. Once all three units are hooked up to the network port here, the GMS-10 network port expander, you will be able to share your sonar 
uh, and your away points. We take another look. In this scenario, we've got a 93 SV with one Garmin Marine Network port on the bow and one on the console, but we're adding the Panoptics Live Scope. So here, we can't go from Panoptics Live Scope into the bow unit because it only has one port. If we do that, we would not be able to see it on the console unit. So again, we would introduce the GMS 10 port expander. We would run our live scope into one port. We would run our bow unit into one port and our console unit into one port. Now we can share that live scope that will be on the trolling motor to our bow unit as well as our console unit. And in the last case scenario, we have a 93 SV with one Garmin Marine Network port to an Echo Map Ultra 126. This unit has two network ports. So here we can kind of daisy chain. We can network from the bow unit to one of the ports in the Echo Map Ultra, and then we can network from the other port in the Echo Map Ultra to the Panoptics Live Scope. So now we can share across the screens. Uh, again, you can have the Echo Map Ultra on the bow. If you want a, you know, a 12-inch screen on the bow and a 9-inch screen on the console, you can reverse these two units, but they need to be hooked up the same way. So let's let's talk quickly about a basic transducer installation. So if you purchase a unit that comes with a transducer in the box, um, if you purchase an Echo Map unit, you're going to get the GT56. That's an all all three in one scanning transducer. This is designed to be mounted um, on the on the back of the boat. Uh, here, kind of a good place to mount it. You need to look up all under the boat. We need good clean water coming off the bottom of the boat. You don't want to mount that transducer too close to the prop. You'll have prop wash. If you mount it too far outside to the edge of the boat, you won't get a good reading. So uh, you want to mount it where there's not a chine or a pickup or anything in front of that transducer. You need good clean water coming off, uh, going over that transducer. You also want that transducer to hang just below the bottom of the boat. So we've got good, clean water coming off the boat, going over the face of that transducer. You do not want that transducer tilted up or down. You won't get a full chevron or arch on your screen. Let's talk about advanced transducer installation. So in this case, maybe we tried the basic installation and when we were running up on, on plane, we lost the bottom if we just had our all-in-one mounted on the transom, okay? So what we need to do is we probably need to go with a scenario like this. We would need to take that GT56, that all-in-one transducer, off the back of the boat, and then we would add either the GT30 or the GT36. These have our our side view and our clear view sonar built in. These do not have 2D traditional sonar built in. Because you can only run one traditional sonar on a boat, if you have multiple 2D traditional sonars on a boat, you can have what we have, what we call crosstalk, where we have interference. So what we would do, we would run one trans transducer on the back of the boat, uh, and this is really for our fishing transducer, side view and clear view. And then we would run an in-haul. This is a glue in the hull, a GT8 high wide in-haul transducer or a GT15 medium band chirp in-haul. These will give our 2D. So when we're doing that 40, 50, 60 miles an hour across the bottom and we lose our transom mount transducer, we will be able to read through the in-hole transducer. And then once we come off plane and slow down, we can switch and look at all, th all three of our scanning sonars. We can see our 2D as well as our side view and down view. If you go with this scenario, you will need to add this Y cable. Okay, this is a 12 pin to 8 pin to 12 pin sounder cable. Okay, so let's talk about this a little more in depth. So 
If we have our unit and we want to go this route, we would add our Y cable. So we would plug the orange connector into the orange port on the back of the unit. Then we, you have two plugs available, an orange and a blue. So we would choose our GT30 or our GT36. This would plug into the orange port, which would give us clear view and side view. Then we would select our GT8, GT15, or if we needed a three through hole, we could go with a B60. That would plug into the blue port. So now all of these sonars would show on the screen. I just want to make this perfectly clear. This is your only options. These transducers listed are your only options if you choose to go with the Y cable. Okay, so if you go with the Y cable, you can only select a GT30 or a GT36 for your side and clear view. And for your running transducer with your 2D uh, technology, you can only go with the GT8, GT15, or the B60. There are hundreds of other through hole and transducers, but if you go with this Y cable, these are the only transducers that will work. So let's move or shift to a bay boat or a skiff. So two scenarios here. So good, I would recommend going with the UHD 74 SV or the 94 SV. Again, you get your live scope capability, your quick release mount, your preloaded pre mapping. Here we've got the blue chart G3. So we have our coastal offshore mapping in here. So if we decide to take our boat inland, we can buy the, the inland mapping card. We have the one micro SD car, card slot, side view capabilities. Um, if we jump up to the um, Echo Map 106, again, the added features, we get the preloaded uh, mapping, the G3 and Lakeview G3, as we discussed earlier. So you're getting all those benefits of the Echo Map Ultra 106 or the 126. Again, the Echo Map 74 SV or 94 SV, you're getting blue chart G3. So you're getting that coastal mapping, you're getting uh, your 2D sonar, your clear view sonar, your vivid side view sonar, your engine data, depth range shading, live scope ability, as well as quick draw contours. If you jump up to the Echo Map Ultra, Again, you're getting everything. You're getting both your Lakeview and G3 mapping. You're getting all your sonars, engine data through NEMA 2000, depth range shading. Here we can now run both of our live scope, quick draw, or fusion. And I know that's big in the uh, offshore guys. You guys love your stereos, so you can now control your fusion stereo. And I do want to briefly touch, I know I wasn't going to talk about it, but you know, we have a good and better, but we don't have a best. So I did want to throw one slide up here to show you that, you know, you can jump up to the best as our GPS map series. Now, if you're a freshwater fisherman, all of our pro staff, I would say 99% of them are running Echo Map Ultras. Uh, they really don't need the added features like radar and all and um, and fusion, I'm sorry, and uh, the GXM54 and the run of FLIR. They don't need those capabilities uh, in the inland market. But the GPS map series does have all those capabilities. So now we have the ability to run a radar. We can run the GXM54 and run uh, serious weather and fish mapping. Uh, we have a FLIR integration. So uh, the GPS map series will work with the thermal imaging cameras. Um, so these units will do a lot. The GPS series is our best series. It will do everything and more. So stay tuned for the additional part two on good, better, best with the GPS map series. Um, please, if, if you like this webinar and you want to learn more, we have additional uh, Garmin Marine webinars where we go in depth on, you know, advanced features uh, of, of our units. Uh, so please check them out on the Garmin YouTube channel. Uh, we also have a Garmin uh, podcast called Behind a Chart Plotter, where we get to know some uh, great guests. Uh, 
So please uh, check that out. Uh, again, guys, I want to thank you uh, for spending the time with me uh, on this webinar. And again, if you have any questions, please send them to marine.training at garmin.com. Thank you.